Hi, this is Richard, Whiskey 5 Alfa Romeo Hotel. Now, I don't normally make videos, but I wanted to introduce to you Cowtown Amateur Radio Club's Buildathon 23, project number two. We're gonna be building this guy, which is, it's the ADX, it's a four band digital transmitter. Let's have a look at it and see what you're getting yourselves in for. The ADX was originally developed by Barb, WB2CBA, and a huge vote of thanks to him for the work that he's done on this. It's easy to build, it uses only through-hole components, provides up to about five watts in output power, operates on the four digital modes, Whisper, JS8, FT4, and FT8, and you choose which of the four bands you want your particular uh, transceiver to operate on. The tower count kit that we're putting together will have all the boards necessary to produce a sandwiched uh, arrangement, if you will, providing a very nice little package to operate from. We're pulling this together via a group buy, and it'll be supplied with a single low pass filter, primarily for the 10 meter band, to encourage our technician class members to, uh, to join on, us on HF. Uh, you can order additional low pass filters, and we think we can pull this together for around $30 plus $3 for each of the band pass filters that you may need. The kit's supplied with four types of board. Across the top, we have the main board and the front panel, and down the bottom, we have the low pass filter boards and the bottom cover for the sandwich. The main element is the motherboard, which is a double-sided high quality board, which is a pleasure to work with. The board is laid out in logical modules and you start to build them one at a time and test them along the way as you perform the build. You start by laying things out, organizing all your components, and we start on the power supply in the Arduino section first. We then move across to the VFO, and once that's installed, we then add the control buttons on the other side, and it's not long before we can start to undertake the first test on the VFO. We're looking for a one megahertz uh, frequency signal coming out of the VFO. Don't worry, if you don't have the test equipment, we'll have people there that are able to use it and can test and work with you as you progressively make the build. Add a few discrete components and move on to the power amplifier section, install the power transistors, and then finish off any low pass filters that you need to complete your kit. It's not long before we're ready to start testing it out and connecting it up to see that everything works. Now I recorded the power output from each of the, on each of the bands on the unit that I built across a range of input voltages. But focusing on 12 volts, which is where we're targeting, we went from 4.4 watts on the 40 meter band down to two watts on the 10 meter band which is perfectly adequate for digital modes, as you'll see in the next couple of slides. So what we end up with is a really fantastic, neat little unit, which provides hours and hours of fun and excitement as you work the HF bands using digital modes. You can see here, I just this was the first time I set it up and used it, signal coming in across the top, two-way QSOs taking place on the right, if we go across to see where the signals are being heard on Grid Tracker, you can also see the spots from my transmissions, which are finding their way all across various areas of the United States. I also switched it on to Whisper and left the Whisper beacon running for a while. You can see here, even with a small number of watts, I had signals going all the way to Australia and down to New Zealand, across to Europe, as well as all the way across the United States. And if you think I'm running a really big antenna to achieve those results, this is my 40 meter antenna. It's a 40 meter ham stick mounted on the desk behind me with a radial that runs out into the adjoining room. I wanted to show you the connections and how the ADX works. Basically, there are only four connections to the device, the microphone and speaker using a standard 3.5 millimeter stereo plug, which goes to the sound card on your computer. And up over here, you have the DC input, a maximum of 12 volts between 10 and 12, and a BNC connector going out to the antenna. Sitting on the back of the ADX is the installed low pass filter. Now you manually select or change the filter depending upon the band you're using. So the options I'm showing here are the ones that I built for 10, 15, 20 is in the unit and 40 meters down here, which is ideally matched with the NFED halfway project that we actually went through recently. So the way the status lights and the buttons work, there are four status lights, which initially on power and indicate the band that you have chosen. And whilst in operation, it indicates the digital mode that's currently in use. There are three buttons, a left and a right button, a transmit button, and an LED to indicate 
when the, uh, the ADX is in transmit mode. You can choose which four bands you actually wish to use and you program that into the Arduino. So you have four set bands of choice. And when you first power the ADX on, the red light flashes, then the band LED flashes three times to indicate which band it was on. I'll just do that again. You'll see that on my particular unit, it flashes three times on where I've marked as 20 meters. So there, two, three, there we are and then it defaults back to the mode that you're currently using. Now to change the mode of operation, you simply use the button and move it left or right to select the mode that you want. Now in this case here, that is now set to operate in FT8 on 20 meters, which is the install band. If I wish to change the band, I simply press both buttons together it flashes three times to indicate the band which is currently selected and the transmit light comes on to indicate that you're in band configuration mode. You then select up or down, in which case I've now changed this to 10 meters and of course I'd need to change out and put the 10 meter low pass filter in as well. I hit the transmit button to confirm, it flashes three times and now there we are, back to FT8 on 10 meters. The last thing to demonstrate is the use of the transmit button. All this button does is simply put the transceiver into transmit by pressing, which enables you to tune the, uh, the antenna if you're using an ATU, or to ensure that you're actually getting and re or record the amount of power that you're getting out of the device. In case you were wondering what these particular items are here on the, on the cover, that's a modification that uh, Barb W2B2CBA made, which enables you, if you wish to install pin headers on there, you can actually store your bandpass filters sitting on top of the device as a method of keeping everything nice and neat. So what we end up with is an absolutely beautiful little radio that you've built yourself and with which you can have hours and hours of fun learning about digital modes and getting on the HF bands and enjoying yourself. Don't worry, just as we did with the NFEN Halfway Project, we'll be there to help you every single step of the way and make sure the journey is an enjoyable one. Now you will need to pre-order kits in order to participate in the project and the pricing shown here is only available to members of the Cowtown Amateur Radio Club. They'll be initially limited to a maximum of two ADX kits per member. Now due to the space limitations of the clubhouse we can only have 20 people building the project at any one particular time if you want to be supported in the program. Other members of course are free to purchase kits and build them at home. Now, the program's gonna commence during the uh, July uh, timetable following the ARL field day in June. Orders will be closing, or pre-orders will be closing on the 30th of April, so you need to get your orders in to the email address shown here, countownadx at gmail.com, and a $20 deposit is required per kit to secure the order, and payment details will be sent once you've placed your order. Just simply send an email identifying your name, call sign, a contact number or email, whether you wish to participate in the build program, the number of kits you want, and the number of bandpass filter kits you need for each band. Well, hopefully that was enough to stimulate your interest, and I hope you're going to take up the challenge and join us as we build the ADX during the next Build-A-Thon project. Remember, you need to pre-order your kits so that we can assemble the necessary parts, and I look forward to joining you on the journey. 73s.